The podcast you're about to listen to, Focused on Forward, was created on Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. Free is always amazing. Secondly, there's a creation tool that's going to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone, tablet, or computer. Anchor is going to take that podcast and going to distribute it for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and so many other platforms. And you get to make money from your podcast right away with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one convenient place. So how do you find it and use it? Well, go to your app store, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. You too can make a podcast. You can do it with Anchor. Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations. Be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Focused on Forward. Today, we're talking with James Cox. James here is the host of another podcast called When Words Fail, Music Speaks. But one of the reasons why we're talking with James today is because James has been battling with cerebral palsy his entire life. Now, he has a unique Uh, outlook when it comes to this and how he's dealt with it, how he has uh, fought it all these years, but also uh, what his prognosis is for moving forward. So James, thank you for being on the show today. We're excited to have you. Oh, you're welcome, man. It's it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So what we'll do here is we're going to turn it over to you and we're going to let you uh, bring the folks up to speed about your backstory, who you are, what you are. And, uh, you know, and we'll give you a few minutes at the end and we'll talk about uh, your podcast as well. All righty. Okay. So, hey, everybody, my name is James Cox. This is like he says, um, I'm 40 years old, living with cerebral palsy. Um, now, what for people who don't know who, what that is, essentially, it is a disorder. I'm not going to say it's a disease because you can't be cured, but, you, you know, it's not a curable thing. So, um this order I have is where when I came out of when I was born, I didn't receive enough air when I when I popped out essentially, and uh, I couldn't get enough I couldn't get enough air, and that caused me to have CP. Um, uh, it is a order where my bones aren't as straight as most people's are, and I and I walk with a different kind of gait, you know, walking gait. Um, and my right arm is my right hand is not as uh, profound as my left hand. I'm a left-hander by I, I don't think by choice because I mean you know I, I, uh, I don't know because my right hand doesn't work so I don't uh, so I guess I was born left-handed uh, as they would say. Um, so that that's that, that's CP in a nutshell. Um, and I had I had I, I have a a a father who is and who was. And the Air Force, 30 years, he retired a colonel. So he did a very, very, very good job for himself. Um, I have a sister who is for, uh, I don't know if I should, you know, display her age because she might be mad at me. That's but up she's to you. Two, <laughs> 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 but she's, she's two years older than me. So you can uh, you can easily figure that out we'll, for yourself. We'll do the um, math. Some yeah, of us will have to get out our, our pinky toes, uh, but we'll make it. There, we'll there the you math. go. Yeah. Uh, but she uh, lives with her family. Uh, she has a, a, a daughter and a, and a, and a son. Uh, she has a husband, and they live in Richmond, Virginia, the home of Gore, the, 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 the <laughs> band of the, of the century. You know, because they're based in they're they're based in Richmond, and I, I, I have Ray, to admit, I think this is the first time Guar has ever been mentioned on my podcast. Way to go, man! It's, it's, it's a first. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, uh, James. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The, congratulations, Guar. Right? <laughs> no. Um. But uh, I've had a very normal life. I think uh, my parents are aren't 
aren't rich, but they're not poor. Um, uh, we grew up in a middle class unit, and I've had a good life. Um, there are some uh, moments of, me- of my memory that I rem- remember that was, that was kind of hard. Like in school, I had to go to um, uh, what the special aid cl- classes. And what that is is for people with um, who needs more attention to subjects than the others. With me, I had uh, math, big math problems. And just like everybody else, I don't know who likes math besides my sister and my um, boss that was that worked at um, Dave and Buster's because he's a mathematician. But other than them, I don't, you know, I I think that everybody hates math like I do, and I had a real real hard time with that. Um, so that's why I had to go to special ed classes, um, and they're catered to a few students, not like a classroom, but like you know, what, 20 people, uh, they ca- they had uh, at least six or so people in one class uh, devoted to helping them with certain subjects. Uh, so, yeah, um, going back to my father, um, like I said before, he is a retired, re- retired colonel. Uh, we lived in the Philippines, and I remember that on certain occasions, I remember that they, I remember living in a um, military base house um, where guards surrounded the house nightly um, because of the ongoing issues there in the Philippines. Um, And I had uh, a babysitter by the name of Nora. I loved her to death. I don't know where she's right now because it's been, good Lord, it's been like 30 something years since I've seen her. It's been a minute. It's been a well, yeah, it's been a minute. So I loved her to death. I wish I could find her, but I can't. My mom doesn't know how to get in touch with her, obviously, of course. Um, but she used to teach me Tagalog, and what Tagalog is is the Filipino language. Yes. And I and I remember some words, but not. I, I mean, I was not fluent, and all the um, and all the uh, neighborhood. Um, we I, I lived in in a neighborhood where there was nothing but housemates and they used to come over to, to our house and just talk to Gallagher, to Gallagher with me. They say I would, they, they say I did a pretty well job, but I don't, you know, I mean, I don't remember it, but um, yeah. So, um, and then we lived in Woodbridge, Virginia, Brandon, Florida. Um, we lived in another um, city in, in uh, Florida. I can't remember the name, but then um, when my parent, when my dad retired in '99, okay, he moved to Sumter, South Carolina, because that's where all of his families are. Um, everyone but one brother, um, which lives in North Carolina. Yes, five brothers. Um, so I got five uncles. So I can only imagine the the stress that my grandma went through dealing with the five boys, the six boys. <laughs> and, a lot of and, and my yeah <laughs> right yeah and and my granddad had to deal with him too because my dad wasn't you know I mean he was a good kid but sometimes he got a lot of trouble obviously because he was a guy boy you know at, at very young age um so yeah Florida Florida and Virginia were like the main two um, places we lived mostly at um, I was born in Austin Texas so I don't remember it. Um, so I would love to go back there one day, but then again, COVID. So I don't know when I'm going to, you know, see that place. Yeah. It's um, the great mystery that is 2020. Yes. Uh, man, we, we're living in such a hard time now, you know, and I never thought my, my parents didn't even think that they would even see anything like this. They had never seen anything like this since they were growing up. So it's, it's pretty rough for us all, but we're making it through. Um, I yes, found sir. out. I work at a thrift store in in South Carolina now. Um, I used to work at David Musters for four years. Um, as a host, I had to leave that job because my knees aren't as capable as most people are. And, and with the host, host job, you have to walk around a lot, sending people down, taking their abuse. 
Um, so that's fun. <laughs> I'm sure you've taken a, have a, have you worked at a restaurant before? Yeah, I, I uh, well, I was a bus boy, so. Okay, well, that's uh, the same thing, yeah. yeah. But I, I dealt, you know, I, I worked closely with all the uh, waiters and waitresses and, and uh, saw what they went through and was not none too eager to jump into that role. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I had people yell at me. I had a whole, uh, since I was a host, I used to, uh, we, we had like an iPad and, and we had a program that that's, that's called um, bar, bar seat or something. And what that is, is, is it shows you where to put the people and everything. And on every Saturday, I hate going to work out on Saturdays, man, because that was a, that was a, a, a not so fun time for us all. Um, we all hated Saturdays because there was everybody and their mother and the kitchen sink comes in Saturday nights. It wasn't a pleasant time. And I remember work, working by myself at the host stand because you usually have two or three people, people working to me. Um, there was one time when we were backed up with like 100 people backed up and all hundred people literally um, came over to the front desk, started screaming at me. I don't know why. I guess they were hungry. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that, then that, I got through that easily. I don't know how. And so that was a moment that I knew I could handle anything under stress. So I don't have white hair. Well, I want white hair, which is odd. <laughs> so, I, yeah, man, I've been trying to dye my hair for forever to, to make it gray or white i won't do it interesting okay so all right so let's talk about your your growing up you you said that uh you, you had to go through some special needs classes and things like that how did that affect you as a as a young man uh you know both emotionally and mentally you know um were you cognizant of, of, of the difference between the classes that some of the other kids were in and and you having to go through this specialized math class Okay, so when I was born, um, when you're born with the, with a with a disability system line, um, you really don't think about that you're actually disabled. I never thought that I was disabled um, mentally, physically. I saw myself walking differently and talking differently, and I understood that I was not like the other people. Um, but that never really affected me. Um, I took life as one day at a time, and I knew that I was different from everybody else, but I didn't see myself as really that different. You know, I, I, after all, I, I am still a human being, and, uh, you know, we live in a world now where I, I finally grew up and, and learned that many people aren't going to be able to see what you see in, in through your eyes. And I see all the goodness in people and I know a lot of people don't see that the same idea so it never really affected the way how I grew, was growing up at the time and it still doesn't today you know it, it's just all about um perspective and and what you see through your eyes you know okay so. no I get I get that and again I think it does come down to perspective but I think many people would struggle with the the idea of being separated off doing something doing something different but if you if you've you'd already wrapped your head around that it sounds like right yeah uh well there were some times and there still are sometimes where i'm kind of upset with being having cp you know because i can't run i can't jump i can't do most things well i can do most things that, that other people can do but one thing in life that i really 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 want to do is run and I can't do that, you know, you know, because um, I walk with a walker and you see it right here, you know, um, I've, I've walked with the walker um, most of my life, I would say the first time I walked with the walker is about four or five. And then I stopped walking with that. And then I got on crutches. Those didn't work at all. And then we uh, put me back on the walker when it was like 21 age 21 because i used to go out everywhere with my mom and hold on to her and she says look you can't do this all the time <laughs> you know so why don't we get you a walker and i'm like okay so 10 years later you see the walker right here right there right there and that's the best walker that i've had yet because that, that that that's 
really well made because the walkers that I've had before, uh, some of the wheels came off. Uh, it, it, it just broke down, you know, and there's no, no there's nobody who would actually re repair them. If so, okay. it would be tremendously high, you know. So right, right. We just right. had to continue buying walkers. So, so you know, many of the people that I've talked to who have um, issues that they're dealing with on a day to day basis, they have what I like to call workarounds. There's things mm -hmm. that it, uh, allow them to <clears throat> do the you know, the same things that that you know, able-bodied folks do day in, day out. So what's one of the workarounds that James uses in his life? Workarounds, uh, what do you mean by that? So, so a workaround is, is, you know, where you may accomplish something in this one general way, but because of limitations, uh, mm -hmm. You may not be able to accomplish it the same way that everybody else does. And so you still do this thing, but you accomplish it by, you know, you work around the situation to still accomplish the same, the same end goal. I don't think that I have a really good workaround because I see other people working like, like at the, like at David Buster's when I worked there. I don't think there was really a, a workaround per se that I've done. I just, I just watched watch people and try to learn it their way, see how they do it. Um, yeah, so that's that's the best way of how I can explain it to you. I really try to be like other people, but I know that I'm not. Uh, but 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 once again, you know, don't get me wrong, I don't let that I don't let that go to go to my head. Um, you know, I don't let that get me down. Um, no, no, I don't think you mean uh, that as a poor woe is me type thing at all. No, no, I don't. No, not that's that's pretty clear. Uh, but let's look at it this way. Uh, what are some things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to adapt what you do to, to get through your day? Hmm. I do have a pretty normal life, um, just as you do, I guess. I wake up, um, take a shower, um, put my deodorant on, you know, everything else. Um, I don't really find that bigger much of a difference between my life and another person's life I would say yeah I, I mean I just do what I do you know every day I get up and go to work just like everybody else nine nine to five jobs sometimes come home relax you know get on the computer uh there's nothing really hindering me from doing uh, what I see other people in your life leading towards you know so okay okay that's fair uh, now, do you experience uh, any muscle or joint issues because of CP? I do. <laughs> I have, uh, um, what's they call it? Arthritis. Yes, that's the key word, arthritis. I have, I have some kind of other arthritis. I don't know what they, what they name it. But uh, every six months to a year, I have to go get cortisone shots. And I'm due for one right now because my left knee really, really hurts sometimes. It's hard for me to walk when I have arthritis. Pops up. Um, but like I said, that's it's very rare that it does because whenever I go to get a shot every six months to a year, I got to go get one, another one. And uh, thank God I have Medicaid or in Medicaid because without those, I can't afford them, you know. So, but yeah, but that's the only thing that uh, really hurts, hurts, hurts me right now. Okay. Um, so, and I do have a really bad balance, a balance um, problem. Um, way back in, in elementary school, I had to learn how to fall down. Um, I remember going to class. I guess, I, I guess it's what you call class. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm used some sessions. But I remember, um, I think her name was Miss Nancy. And she used to push me down and said, you got to learn how to fall, right? And so she put, put a helmet on me, of course. Learn how, try, try to push me down in, in like multiple variations. And that's, that's essentially how I learned how to fall down. So I didn't really like her because I thought then, you know, she was not being nice to me, you know, by pushing me down. I'm like, why is she pushing me down? My mom's like, she's pushing me down to learn how to fall down, you know, because, you know, being a mom, she's like, I don't want you to die. So you need to learn how to fall down right. I'm like, right, okay, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then I, then I understood, oh, okay, well, they're, they're, you know, she's not being so mean to me. So she's pushing me down, but. Yeah, there were moments where I did not like her at all. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I could, yeah. I can see that. But 
you know, again, uh, all about perspective. Your perspective now is that you see the benefit of what she was trying to do. Right. In in the moment, she could probably have seen a little bit mean or, or harsh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so yeah, I get that. Yeah. Okay. So how do you uh, go about uh, helping others to see that CP is something that, that they can work with? Uh, I think just by the way I live my life every day. Um, because I've heard the term people, uh, you don't, re re you don't realize how much people watch you. Um, and you don't realize how many people you can ex in in inspire. Um, cause I've had like two or three people come up to me at, at, at the investors and just give me like a $5 tip, you know, and they gave me like a little note saying, you know, you're really an inspiration for me, you know, keep up the good work. Here's five bucks, you know. So I've had that. I've had many people come up to me throughout my life and say, you know, you're really an inspiration to me. You know, I, you know, like the David Buskers, I hope you keep it up. You know, don't stop for anything. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I, to me, it's just me living my life. I had no idea that I inspire people, you know. So that was a big shocker to me when, when people come up to me and still to this day, you know, because. Cause there, 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 there was this one guy, I know that uh, in Starbucks. I love Starbucks. We were talking about coffee earlier. I was a big Starbucks fan until this pandemic happened. Um, so every now and then, I live in my apartment right now, as you see. And uh, every now and then, I get an Uber to to Starbucks. Well, I used to. Um, <laughs> but um, but. I remember going in Starbucks and getting in line and this guy on the table just, just started looking at me real kind of weird. And I'm like, why is he, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just sharing the line. And he came up to me and says, you know, I really admire you. And I really hope that you keep up the good work and, you know, continue doing what you do. And then he says, here, here's a $15 gift certificate to Starbucks. Like, all right, <laughs> this is great. I get free coffee, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, so um, I'm still amazed if, you know, like I said, when people come, come up to me and do stuff like that for me. So that's, um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, especially, you know, hey, free coffee, right? So can't, can't beat it. <laughs> yeah, I can't beat that at all. No. Uh, considering I think coffee flows pretty heavily in my veins at this point in my life. How does this... Um, affect your interactions relationships with other people now i know that you go you have a job you interact mm -hmm. you function with people and all those all those things does do you view it as something that limits you or do you view it, this as something that you that you navigate through and just work with i don't think it limits me i think it uh only helps me grow as a person um because there are people in life that you want as your friend and keep them around. There are a few people that'll backstab you like I have twice before. Uh, so there, you just gotta live life the way that you you know that you can live it to your best ability. And I try to do that every single day. Okay. Um, yeah. So going back to those, to those people who did me wrong, I've had one person who were let stay at my house because he was homeless. And I know I'm from the um, the company that I work with now, um, you know, taking me to work and everything because I can't drive on my own yet. Um, so I let him stay with me for a couple of weeks, and I had to I had to um, uh, get him out of my house because I found out that he really lied to me about certain stuff, and then come to find out a week later he stole my two thousand dollar camera with all the with all the lenses and stuff so that was fun oh no that's not yeah, good at that all was, huh? that's not that good was, at all uh, yeah because i was really into photography man i mean I, I i really really enjoyed it and i'm a mommy he took it away i'm like i can't enjoy this now and you know where i'm gonna get it so so i bought a new camera for for i i um this guy on online he gave me a great deal for uh, the nikon camera so i'm gonna slowly get back up there whenever this pandemic you know, um, evacuates and, you know, hopefully I can get back into photography full, full force. That'd be um, cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So now 
as you mentioned earlier, there is no cure for CP, but there are treatments to help the, the person with the disorder uh, navigate through life. Now, which therapies have you found to be the most successful or more or the most helpful for you? Uh, I've had therapy way back when I can't really go into that with you because I don't remember it because I have been so long ago. But um, fair enough. Yeah, obviously, you know, I mean, because you forget different things in life because I mean, they're, you know, 16 years ago, you don't remember what you ate for breakfast, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there are therapists that really help me and, and, and work with me. Um, now, we have tried to get the, we've um, went to the, um, the doctor in Virginia. Um, Walter Reed, I think it was, you know, one of the best medical facilities out there. And they told us about Botox. Now, for what Botox is, is, is it's poison, right? So they told me that if they could put Botox in my legs, it would help my legs stand straighter and help me walk a little bit easier. Well, we tried it. Uh, and it did not work, but, but we, but, you know, yeah, so I don't think, I don't know, CP is fully, um, curable at this time. Um, right. so I do remember being in the cast for like two weeks and then taking, taking that off and trying to rewalk again. Um, and it just went back to the, the, the way I walked before, you know, so I don't really think that there, that there is a, um, a cure for uh, CP, although I have been told, and I'm not sure if this is true, so don't think me what it is. If you don't want your, if you don't want the your child to come out as you know with CP, I've heard that if people, if 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 women get C sections, then they then they then then the child can't come out with CP. But once again, I'm not hundred yeah, percent sure. So you, yeah. Don't yeah, know. So talk to your doctor about that. There you go. All <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. All right. So we'll we'll talk more about your your podcast here in a moment, but I'm going to have to assume that music plays a pretty big role in your life, uh, your mental health, your emotional health, all those type of things. So how does music act as a therapy for you? Man, music is the world thing for curing stress. Stress can be cured in so many ways. The main way how it cures me, because I do have depression, is music. And there are there are some songs where you just can't tell people about that song because it means so much to you. Right? Understood. I'm sure I'm sure you've heard songs like you like I, I Oh yes sir. What did I just listen to, you know? I mean it's just that good, you know. And and for me to to and it's always there, you know. You can always upload it on uh, YouTube, Apple, uh, Apple to Apple iTunes, or Apple Music. I'm sorry, uh, Spotify. You know, there's so many ways around to get to music. You know, and it just speaks to me like 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 no one else could. You know. Oh, I get that. I always tell people that when uh, my bad day song, or one of them, I should say. Um, is uh three little birds by bob marley yes so that's amazing song, yeah yeah you know, and the funny thing is i'm not a huge marley fan but i put that song on and i play it until i smile yeah I, you know it, it, you done it it does that song man yeah. it just i don't know what it is about that song but i play that song and i play it till i smile and mm. uh it's amazing how much power that that song has so right. that's cool yeah. yeah um yeah music is 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 huge in my life as well so uh, that's cool. Um, all right. So we talked about that. So obviously, uh, music plays a big role in your life as well. But other than music and photography, what does James like to do in his spare time when he's uh, not podcasting and, and not taking pictures or jamming out to something? Uh, I like to watch movies a lot. I'm a big, avid movie fan. I love, love, love Netflix. And I got to give big props to you because in your background, I see Stanley. Yes, and, you do. <laughs> and that is one of my favorite shows of all time, man. The Office is ongoing. 
I, man, I, there have been some times where I just wa- I, I, I watched the final, the, the, the final episode of The Office. Like, let's go again. I got to rewatch yep. the whole thing. Oh, yeah. oh, man, I must have watched that series like 15 times now. No joke. Yeah, I think we're about the same. My daughter and I watch it pretty much uh, episode after episode. We get to, you know, like you, season nine, episode yeah. 23, yeah. and credits. Go back to season one, pilot, back, start all over again. Yeah, yeah. I just watch it because of because of Michael Scott, man. He, Absolutely. Man, I, I, got you know, I saw something the other day, and I thought this was kind of interesting. They said that uh, people who suffer with anxiety, which is myself, I, mm-hmm. I deal with anxiety on a day-to-day basis. Right. Uh, they said that people with anxiety like to watch the same shows over and over again because they know what's going to happen. Yes. And yeah, I've... So- and I, and it was, that was one of those moments where my head just kind of went like mind blown. <laughs> Boom. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, mm-hmm. that's why I watch Star Wars so much and why I watch yeah. Office so much and, you know, mm-hmm. all these other things. So, yeah. all right. Well, cool. Yeah. But other than that, um, I do what I do play on the PS4 with, with my good friend, John. Um, he makes me laugh like no other, you know, no other person <laughs> can. Awesome. Because, yeah, because, we, man, we just get on WWE games and just, you know around with that for hours right and he is the only guy that can make me mad and make me laugh in like within minutes you know <laughs> so, well that's a good friend that's, that's the only guy that can you know no other person can do that so well, that's cool yeah. that's a good friend yeah, it is he is all right so looking back on all things that are james cox over the entirety of your life uh, one of the questions I like to ask all my my guests is, is this: Looking back on that, and not to minimize your life experience down to one sentence or so, but what is the biggest thing that you have learned over your what you say forty plus years of life? Right. Oh, uh, one word, or do you want one sentence? Well, one sentence is cool. One to two sentences. Okay. All right. One one sentence, three words. Never give up. I mean, because if I give up, then I would probably be honestly probably dead right now, you know, because with depression, you do think of, you know, the, the unknown word suicide and that, yeah. you know, just because you think about that doesn't mean you're going to do it. And a lot of people get that wrong. Right. A lot of people um, confuse those two things. Yeah. And they're completely, completely different things. And I've had uh, two of my family members commit suicide and I never wanted to put my family in that position because I got so much so much to live for now you know i mean i got this i got this incredible podcast incredible podcast like yours um i know incredible friends there's life all around you there's colors there's you know air there's you know i mean blue skies green grasses you know what what else could you want man that's right you know yeah yeah it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem one of my friends wrote the other day exactly yes yes that can't be more truer yes sir yeah so okay excellent well uh let's take a minute and let's talk about that incredible podcast of yours so again as a reminder for the, our, those who are listening it's called when words fail music speaks so tell us a little bit about your podcast what's the 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 basic gist of it what are you what are you looking to accomplish with your podcast <clears throat> okay so the way how i got started was um i had this friend mark johnson uh, um he he was a um teacher in college and uh, we met in college back in 2005, I think. And he says, you know what? You're really good with music and you're really good with technology stuff. Why don't you start a music podcast? I'm like, hmm, that could work. So I contacted my friend Blake Mosley, which is my co-host now. I call him Brosley because of the combined the two words, you know, two words. <laughs> right, right. Like Mosley, Bro- Brosley. I'm the only one that can call him that. Uh, so he's a, he's a fantastic human being with with a vastly knowledge of music as well, and me and him, him and I, I should say, uh, um, worked on uh, worked on a, another podcast um, called um, I don't know what this what it's called, um, but it had to do with something like um, you know people don't talk anymore they're they're always on their phones and stuff you know, and that, and that went on for a few episodes and that didn't work. So we took off like about a year ago or, or, or so from podcasts and I'm like, hey, and I contacted him. I'm like, Hey man, why, why don't you think about, you know, when we're to music speaks, I guess, you know, we just talked about music and all. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm down. That's so, cool. so what we do on me on when words fail is we pick a genre, any kind of genre now. 
and we uh, go through the artists from that genre, either five or six of them, and we tell the listeners about th that artist, how many albums have been put out, you know, uh, what got them started in that music genre. And then there are times when we do interviews with uh, with musicians. Um, one of my biggest all-time uh, 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 things is I got Yogi from Demon Hunter, one of my okay. all-time favorite bands of all time. I got him on our podcast, and I was amazed at that. Um, I, uh, because usually you go through... Um, you know they're 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 publicists, you know, and they give you a hard time. Like I, like I, uh, I tried to get Nita Nita Strauss's um on there. So is is a female guitarist for Alice Cooper. Okay. Try to get her, and the and the, her PR says you gotta get at least thirty thousand listens or downloads. Like I can't never do that, you know. So I, <laughs> so I just contacted Yogi from Instagram. I'm like, hey man, who do I contact to get you on our podcast for for a possible interview? And he was like, me, dude. I'm like, all right, it's cool. I got you, right? And he's like, yeah, man, I can come on, you know, a week after next week because my daughter just got stung by a scorpion. I'm like, oh no, take care of that first, please. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. And then come on, yeah. So we had a we had a nice conversation about you know music and they're you know the, where where they're going and you know because they're putting out a new album in the next year. Um. I've had a conversation with Bill Protzman. Very beautiful conversation. He's a pianist. and makes awesome music too. And we talked about, you know, depression and suicide as well. Okay. Um, so, um, and we, and Blake knows a, a musician um, by the name of Davey Calabrese. I'm not sure if you heard of it. Uh, Calabrese is a band. It's a horror band, kind of like the Misfits. From, okay. You know, the sure. 80s. Yeah. Yeah. And so he has um con been contacted by um Davy Calories for a long time. He found him through MySpace. Remember, remember oh, yeah. MySpace? Yeah. Oh yeah. Way back back in the, Yeah. Your wall with your song that played and you had you know Susie. Yeah. Came. Good old Tom, right? He was everybody's friend. Everybody's <laughs> friend. Yeah. Tom was everybody's friend. Tom was it, man. Yeah, but um. Uh, he cut so so Brosley contacted Davy and Davy came on and and it was just the joy of Blake's life because he that was his like one of his all time favorite bands. So, um, that's cool, so, man. All right, but the way the my 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 focus from now on is this show has always been about the fans, right? Because me having depression, I don't want anybody else to feel depressed. So for an hour or two hours or however long our episodes are, we want the fan or listener to be stress-free, worry about nothing else, you know, just listen to some good podcasting, maybe get a few more um, new artists that they never even heard of before. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. So that's that. That's our main goal right now. Cool. I like that. I, uh, a nice escape from the harsh realities. Yeah, for oh. life, you know, because life brings joy, it brings hatred, it brings, you know, worry, upset, and I, and I don't want anybody to be worried or upset or fearful for anything, you know. So, okay. Yeah. All right, so one more question for you before we wrap this up here. So, you have a lifetime of experience of dealing with this. Clearly, CP is not going anywhere anytime soon, uh, unfortunately. Um what advice would you give to a parent of a special needs child, a child who, you know, they, they find out that their, their child is going to deal with CP. What advice would you have for them? Uh, I've answered this before in, in, in another podcast. And, and this is so true that, um, that I'm going to say this, uh, never give up on them because they'll come across certain aspects of life that they don't really understand and if you uh show them the way of you know becoming better uh living their life um that would be beneficial to them because some things in life that i didn't understand i asked my dad my dad and my mom and they talked me through it and you know kind of calmed me down so uh with that said never give up on them and always let them do what they want to do within reason 
you know, I mean, I, you know, I, obviously that, but, uh, yeah, just, you know, hold them real tight and tell them you love them every day and just, you know, let them live their life and never give up, never give up on them. Okay. Excellent. I, I think it's important that, you know, uh, folks such as yourself who, who are battling this issue, uh, allow themselves to be seen, allow themselves to be, to be present. Uh, you know, you talked about those who watched you, uh, from your experience and experiences of life and just, you know, being an inspiration for them. And I, and I think that's an amazing thing. I, so I commend you on that. Um, you know, being the, uh, uh, you know, kind of the unofficial spokesman, uh, of, of CP. I, you know, I think about guys like you, I think about guys like, uh, you know, Josh blue, the comedian, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, I remember when he came on last comic standing, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people uh, immediately, uh, kind of discredited him, I think, because, you know, oh, he's, there's a guy with, you know, with an issue, uh, right. he's hysterical, you yeah. know, <laughs> and I, I think if you, if you yeah. just look at him, you know, and I think that's the thing is we have to learn a, as a, a society to not look at people as is someone that's uh, different or, or to be separated or, or things like that. You know, you know, the, the word inclusion gets thrown around a lot these days and, but it's very true in this instance, you know, you, everybody needs to be included uh, right in life right. and so yeah. you know not learning or learning how to not view uh folks who are dealing with something different from yourself as different from yourself right so, exactly exactly yeah, so sure. but yeah no this has been great james i've enjoyed having you on our show we're uh we're just uh you know our our, our point in, in this whole this whole little world is uh that hopefully at the end of this uh, each episode people get to see uh the example that you've set in your life and they get to see how they that you have become focused on forward, and that's clearly a thing. You are very focused on on moving forward in your life, and and I, I think it's awesome that you're so focused on trying to help others move forward in their life through your show uh, by giving them something to reach out and listen to. So again, uh, guys, if you want to hear more about James, uh, go check out "When Words Fail, Music Speaks." Uh, I know I will be. Um, I. I can't get enough about music in my life. So, so why not have a little more and go go give James a a follow, a subscribe and uh, download some of his episodes so he can get uh, Alice Cooper's guitarist on it. Okay. Yes, please. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I do want her. Um, There are, there are a few um, people that that they want on the, on the show, but she's one of the main, main, um, main people. Yeah. So 3000 people will be all come on now. (laughs) There There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, James, thank you so much. And that's going to conclude us today for Focused on Forward. Well, that concludes another episode of Focused on Forward. To be a guest of Focused on Forward, you can reach us through Twitter at Podcast FOF, through our Facebook page named Focused on Forward, or through email FocusedOnForward at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told. So until then, Be safe, be kind, and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward.